Derek, you've uh, you've worked on Hezbollah. You've uh, you were the architect of the Lebanese Canadian uh, bank case. Uh, how how do you do you see the United uh, States government now uh, equipped uh, in in uh, fighting uh, Hezbollah's finances? I mean, we've seen a lot of progress, but there's a lot of work to be done. When you have people chanting death to America, that's some serious stuff, right? The consequences are really significant for this country. So we need a lot more action and a lot less words. So we've had some interagency task force success. They cited the Lebanese Canadian Bank investigation on the Project Cassandra as a model for success for interagency operations. That case was a success because of the tools of national power for the U.S. government to pull all the expertise together in one interagency task force. So you think an agent like myself from the DEA had any idea the impact of a 311 action? I had no idea, but I learned from Treasury's finest. I learned from Dr. Asher, some of the the best in the, in, the, in the country. So we have to start listening to these experts and we have to learn what works, what doesn't work. We know that drugs are generating, according to the UN, and I'm not a big statistics guy, $400 billion a year. And we know, according to every leader of government seems to be saying, that terrorists are turning to criminal networks for their funding, right? So you have to have these interagency task forces. So with the Lebanese Canadian Bank success, even though it was a successful initiative, it was just a drop in a bucket. And there needs to be consequences for the countries that are not cooperating. Well, thank you, and I appreciate uh, the panel here. And Derek, thank you for your obvious observations. But it's one that uh, Americans need to familiarize themselves more with, about the real nature of Hezbollah and the real nature of uh, terror finance out there. And I think there's not uh, the recognition of what the costs, what the consequences uh, have been. Okay, so actively, you know, DEA and other agencies have investigations of major drug trafficking, multi-ton quantities of cocaine leaving South America, going into uh, Europe, into Lebanon, into Australia. By the way, you know how much it uh, sells for cocaine in Australia? About $250,000 a kilogram. This is about making money. Going back to the question, uh, we've had a lot of success uh, considering how difficult it is to infiltrate these organizations in the tri-border region, as an example, because of the corruption, the extent of the corruption is through the roof. And in Venezuela, what about what we were dealing with in Venezuela? Cargo planes leaving, protected by military, going all over West Africa, okay? And then these extremist groups moving to cocaine all over West Africa. All right, so this is a difficult environment. You're dealing with corruption everywhere you turn. So somebody needs to really look at that very closely. Uh, if you look at the recent success, there's a very significant Hezbollah drug trafficker that was extradited to the Southern District of Florida as he was trying to move cocaine from uh, Latin America into France, okay? And we have a lot of different stories. If you look at Amon Juma, the man was indicted for moving $200 million a month through his trade-based money laundering scheme. So these are very serious drug traffickers. And I gotta tell you, as a taxpayer that has three kids, it's very concerning that the, the cars that were moving from the United States to be sold in West Africa for a profit, they're still moving as we sit here today because the US government did not have a whole of government approach, it was done like I say, one hand behind the back, one hand covering the eye, and one leg. We need the whole body. We need everybody's participation, but that will only happen if the leadership makes that decision. If this is a serious threat, they're chanting death to America, let's go, okay? So the thing is, is drug trafficking, it's not just drug trafficking, it's extortion. It's human smuggling, it's sex trafficking, it's, it's diamond smuggling, it's anything to make a buck. And I got news for you, Lebanese organized crime groups are very good at that. And by the way, let's talk about technology. Do you know what it's like for law enforcement in the United States to go after these people when they use a sophisticated encrypted technology to communicate? We are in the dark. You understand the significance of that? We're in the dark when we can't infiltrate communications. So we have our hands full. I mean, I think we can make a lot of progress, but you know, again, it's all about the money and drug trafficking is, is producing a lot of money around the world.
I mean, where do you see, what are exact measures that you would recommend the administration takes immediately to uh, to improve either its, uh, um, you know, uh, like working uh, system, working apparatus in targeting Hezbollah or, or just sanctions? Okay, so you need a financial task force immediately. Okay, we have one at the Counter Narco Terrorism Center. The FBI and other agencies have similar operations that need to be kind of working more together, all right? You have to have the resources. You need resources to go after this enemy of the United States, right? It must be a priority, right? That's the key. We can have all the papers in the world, we can have all the discussions, but you need action, right? 9-11 Commission highlighted all this information sharing uh, failures that were going on. They're still going on, okay? They're still going on. And I have a lot of stories about information sharing failures where people are dying because of lack of accountability in that area. So you need, you need accountability on leadership for information sharing. Uh, you have to have the expertise, right? There's one of the things I'd like to highlight is when we did the entire action against the LCB, we had a former IRS uh, investigator that helped us, you know, walk us through the global movement of money. DEA as an agency, we, we, we don't have that institutional expertise. So we need contract support and my folks from Special Operations Command and other entities that helped us understand the movement of monies in, in this incredible network. Uh, but you also have to listen to some of the best U.S. government leaders that we've ever had. General Kelly, Admiral Stavridis, and of course, one of my favorite, Admiral McRaven at SOCOM. They actually have been looking at this evolve for so many years. And I was given a slide back in 2007 with a fireball by Admiral Stavridis, which will, I'll never forget. When the Attorney General asked me what keeps me up at night, it's that fireball. All right, so we need to listen to the experts that studied this. They don't just testify at con Congress and put out bad information. They understand what was happening in their region. So you need to start looking. I wrote a paper, and I'm not the greatest writer in the world. I tried hard to write a paper on the lessons learned in the Lebanese Canadian Bank investigation. And, and the senator, like I said, wrote a finding that it was a great model for interagency cooperation and moving forward. Let's take some successes. Take the lessons learned, listen to the expertise, not just government officials, but leadership, uh, business leaders and folks that work around the world to kind of put these things together. But you need action. That's the most important message. Let's stop with the government interagency meetings to pontificate for, you know, a week straight without any action. When is somebody going to be asked about results? And that's kind of like one of my main messages. You know, you have to have the results. Do you know, like, some of the stuff I follow is like, forget the drugs for a second. What about all this illegal immigration coming into the tri-border region where they're trying to get them visas to get into the U.S.? What about some of the cases, like CNN was reporting a story, and I don't know, you know, the details too much, but these 173 Venezuelan passports, they were trying to get people these passports. Well, what are they doing? What's their movement going to be? Right? So it's a lot bigger than just drug trafficking. It's, it's all of this criminal activity. And I want to steal uh, uh, Chairman Royce's line. It's a full-time criminal enterprise. That's what it is. So let's treat it as an enterprise like that. You know, I always say you can't work terrorism in a cocoon. If they're a terrorist organization, but they're a criminal network, you have to work it as a criminal network. And that's what there's some unbelievable investigators in the United States and Europe and other places that we can work together. You have to bring people together and let's stop with the bureaucracy. Let's stop with the battling over turf because people are dying. It's all there very clearly and his recommendations are things we need to take action on. The way we phrase it is Hezbollah is in fact the state and we continue to look at Hezbollah through a terrorism soda straw. Given that, it's a, is it a cultural mindset here within the government looking at and self-limiting our approach? Because when we looked at, look at the cash transfers to Hezbollah from Iran, that money gets laundered into the system through hundreds of enterprises. How, what would be your recommendations beyond what you said already, Derek and Jonathan, to go forward? Because I, I would second everything you've already said. Uh, I could say that, you know, we also did uh, 311 sanctions against some of the uh, money exchange houses, which I know got their attention. One thing that was fascinating to me, like when we hit 
the Lebanese Canadian Bank with the 311 action, they moved their funds because they didn't want the U.S. to go after the funds. They moved their funds to other banks all around Lebanon. But then we used the 981K action and took the monies because what was happening is another bank in Lebanon, Lebanon Bank of Francais, was using United States corresponding accounts, right? Moving monies into the U.S. So what did we do? The great work of the Southern District of New York put a 981K action on the corresponding banks. They couldn't move their money. After a day or two, the lawyers called from Lebanon and said, what are you guys doing? We can't move our money. What do we need to do? Just send the check to the U.S. Marshals account. 150 million came that day. It's very powerful. So we need to increase those kind of efforts and get the expertise that understand how to do this and do it in a very smart way and a calculating way without, we need a comprehensive game plan with action and accountability. Quick comment and then a, and then a question. Um, I wanted to comment that I think there's been, just to follow up on what Special Agent Malt said, there's been, there's been a total failure um, that I've seen in the U.S. government, and I, and I hope it's going to change, to actually put together a, str a strategy to both strategically understand these, these um, networks from soup to nuts, and then to destroy each aspect of, of what they're doing. And there's been, a, there's been a total failure to actually understand um, the wide range of activities they're involved in. You mentioned in, um, Hezbollah in Africa and their involvement in sex trafficking, drugs. They're also involved in wide-scale resource extraction from timber to illegal mining. They're making huge amounts of money from this, and we're just leaving all of that money on the table by not even examining it. It's low-hanging fruit. Drug trafficking, just keep in mind that it's worldwide. And yeah, historically, you know, in Colombia, the Colombian cartels uh, have dominated, you know, the production. You know, you have production in other areas of the Southern Cone, like Peru and other places. But Venezuela, over the last several years, has been a command and control hub for the movement of cocaine worldwide, not just into the U.S., but all over, you know, Europe and other parts of the world and, you know, West Africa, of course, as a transshipment point. Um, you, you also have, as you know, in this country, we have a fentanyl crisis, right? You have a crisis where kids are dropping everywhere because they're taking these pills and fentanyl. They have no idea what they're taking. And a lot of that stuff is coming through Mexico and Central America. And the chemicals are coming from Asia in a lot of cases, okay? And so you have just this convergence of people that are looking to make money. And they're going to make money any way they can. I mean, again, I'm not a statistics guy, but the UN said, what is it, $400 billion have been generated by drugs. But as Gretchen said, that's just a drop in a bucket. There's so many things that we don't even know about. An overwhelming, complex series of criminal activities that we need to have the experts. You can come into a room and, and put out a strategy and then just implement the strategy. The most important point that I'd like to leave with is the fact that you can have all the strategies in the world. If you do not have an implementation plan, you might as well rip up the strategy. And I'll give you the example. 2011, President Obama, he, he let a very good strategy out on transnational organized crime. Guess what? 2017, President Trump, another strategy. When are we going to have implementation? And it's almost identical. And you know what? The strategies are great. Because the interagency all participated, the experts came in the room, they laid on the table things that make a lot of sense. But when is somebody going to get in the room and say, okay, implement the strategy? When is the taxpayer going to stand up and say, what are we doing with all these strategies? Inspector general reports, how many more do we need? I mean, again, I've been out of the DEA for like three years, but in talking to people, because uh, I remain involved every single day, this is what I, I actually live for this. Um, and yes, there is evidence of movement of drugs around the world. And it, I guess it depends on how you define the Iranian regime. The way I define it is Hezbollah is a big component of Iran and Hezbollah around the world is operating like a major drug cartel.